consider yourself that are solid. <laughs> services and all. Poor Gareth the Crater. She nearly lost him. So don't mention Tenerife to us. What about Paris then? A truly cosmopolitan city. Just would suit two classy ladies like yourselves. Paris? No way. Did you not read in the mid last week? Sure it made headline news. Jim Clemens had me away in a room up the with you in the park. And sure, as soon as she landed, she couldn't wait to get up the on Eiffel Tower. Up the lump she went. All down steps. And then what do you think? She lost her footing on the top level and away she went. Straight into the river that runs through Paris. Tell her the rest of the story, sissy. Aye. Me was sprachling about the water. <laughs> well, up pulls this big boat full of orange men. And some conkerns or other. And well, who do you think pulled her out? None other than her neighbour, John Hardy. She <laughs> <laughs> really has some very unfortunate friends. <laughs> 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 Let's go for something completely different. Now let's see, ladies. What about Australia? Oh, why? That sounds good. I always wanted to go down on the... <coughs> Well, what part would you be sending us to? Well, now, there's a really good offer here for the magnificent area around the Great Barrier Reef. Now, something tells me... There's something bad happened to people we know that went to Australia. <laughs> oh, I sissy, it's your mind. Sam and Thelma McMaster <laughs> went there for their wedding anniversary. I'm sure they haven't been right since. <laughs> <laughs> they with everything, only the ostriches. <laughs> This old jackaroo took them to an ostrich farm, and everything was going great. They had a good look at the ostriches, and then when they were heading out of the pen, didn't this so long uh, ostrich take an umbrage against Sam? And he started to run, and he shouted to Thelma, Come on, quick! <laughs> you know them old ostriches, they're worse than lions when they get started. So away they went with a, at least a hundred ostriches after them. 
Well, Sam the Crater has had welts on his back since. <laughs> so don't talk to us about Australia. <laughs> Well now ladies, if Australia's out I there's quite a sheep up in there for Spain, in the Ronda region, this, the scenery is supposed to be out of this world. Oh dear, something tells me <laughs> that something happened to somebody we know who went there. Hi. Indeed. Sure it was George and Maureen Stewart. <laughs> That's the pair that went there. They headed to a bullfight. And nothing would do to George that he would get into the ring to fight the bull. <laughs> Maureen tried to pull him back, but it was no good. Then the crowd started to shout, Ole Ole! And George. He put up a perfect performance, but the old bull was too strong for him and it tore the backside out of his trousers. <laughs> now Maureen, she was shooting from the ringside. Oh my George! When who should appear on a big white stallion? Only Philip Mora. <laughs> And he got a hint of George and called it the same. So don't talk to us about seeing it. Ladies, I don't know what I'm going to do for you. Your friends all have been on dreadful holidays. You know, what about something sorted out a little closer to home? Here's something I think would suit you down to the ground. It's a, car it's a caravan available for rent in Benoan. A truly beautiful location on the North Antrim coast. Oh look, there's a photograph here of the owner. What a handsome guy. Fair hair going grey. Oh girls, he's a coloretto. He looks like an orange man. His name wouldn't be John Bryce. <laughs> Tell him that's dead on. We'll give him £500 for the week and he can put it to Salter's Town food. Anybody that hadn't paid Joe Hardy, pay him because he's not too pleased. <laughs> <laughs> no money, Joe. If you all enjoyed yourselves, I'll just say thanks very much for coming. And I'll hand over to George, who's going to give us a word of thanks. Thank you very much, Deputy Master. <laughs> At one week before he starts, after he's finished, we'll all stand and we'll sing the national anthem before we go home. Yeah. Right. I always heard it said there's no such thing as a free dinner, and that certainly is the case here. But uh, I was <coughs> tasked with this job of proposing a vote of thanks to uh, some people who have contributed and had a lot to do with our night. Uh, I think when Joe Hardy proposed that we would have a roast hog here. Uh, nobody knew what to expect, but I think it has been a, a resounding success, and I certainly enjoyed my pork, and I hope the rest of you did, but uh, it was great to see so many here. In fact, there's more here than I thought we would have had, and uh, I think there's not much of the pork that the, the pigs left, except for the bones. Anybody wants it tomorrow for a bit of soup, you can certainly have it. But there's some people we want to thank uh, these events don't happen without the uh, contribution from a lot of people. And I would first of all like to thank Joe for organising. Uh, where is Joe? Down there. Joe for organising as Joe and Suzanne 
I know you've put a lot of effort into it, and uh, I'm sure you were hoping that there would be a good crowd, but I think your, your prayers have been answered, and we've had a, a really good night and a, a resounding success. So to you, Joe, thank you very much, and Suzanne. And to all the ladies who helped, uh, who brought food and some beautiful sweets and uh, pastries, I think it, it, our grateful thanks should go to you as well. And uh, if all the visitors would give a, a resounding uh, a clap to the ladies of the Lodge and the band. Give them a big hand.